Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Tuesday, September 27th, and this is your morning prayer. So, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, so today uh, we're going to do going to the book of Romans, and we're starting right at the top. And I think for we might just kind of go through Romans. Um, it's a great book, love it. So <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff in it. We'll see where it takes us. So Romans chapter one. Uh, the first seven verses, one through seven. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake, for the sake of his name among all the nations including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so uh, very very, uh, beginning, the introduction to Paul's letter to the Romans, and a pretty standard type of greeting that we see in in Paul's epistles. Um, Very long opening sentence, (laughs) which... um, yeah, with uh, it's it's all one sentence actually. Nice, nice long sentence verses one through seven. So I think really probably the um, the thing that most grabs our attention here is probably what uh, what Paul says here about um, bringing about the obedience of faith, um, because as as Lutherans and as most uh, Protestants, uh, even though I know. Protestant Lutheran, they're kind of two different things. But anyway, that we're similar. That's that's a difference. That's a different thing. Anyway, um we 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 hold obedience and faith as two opposites almost. Not necessarily opposites, but um things that are kind of you know, you, faith is is something that is, you know, connected. We we are saved by faith alone, right? So faith is a gift gifted to us. Obedience, however, is is what we do. It is our obedience. Obedience to the law, right? Obedience to God's word is everything that we do. So we have something that we don't have any work in with something that we have all of the work in, right? And it's the obedience of faith. And it just, how does that work? How, it, what is the obedience of faith? And um, this also works in well with what we were talking about a little bit last week, um, starting with our midweek Bible study. And uh, justification, sanctification, and obedience to the law, and all this other stuff. So the obedience of faith. What is what is that? How can there be? How can faith and obedience co- coexist like that? Um, and we we discussed a little bit about this on Wednesday night, last Wednesday night, and that you know obedience is not a bad thing. You know when when a Lutheran hears obedience, we shouldn't automatically just like la 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 la. You know it, it's okay. Obedience is good. Um, in fact, the, the, the picture that we, we, we kind of came up with last Wednesday is that before faith, obedience is not necessarily a good thing because we, we, we are thinking we are saved by our obedience. Well, we need to work to make God happy with us. And of course, that's never going to work. We, we are not uh, justified by works of the law, right? But once faith comes, once we are granted the gift of faith where God creates in us faith uh, through the work of the Holy Spirit, then obedience no longer becomes a bad word for us. It, it, it kind of, in a way, faith sanctifies obedience. It makes it good um, in the sense that we are called to, in, in through our faith, we're called in uh, through Christ to be obedient to the word, not for salvation's sake. So called to be obedient doesn't mean we're called to work out our salvation has nothing to do with that. We are called to be obedient because we are called to be what 
Christ has made us, what he has recreated in us, right? He's made us um, holy, complete, back to kind of, you know, what he is creating in us is what we were meant to be like at the beginning, you know, with Adam and Eve and the creation, when everything was perfect, right? Um, Adam and Eve lived according to God's word. God said, this is what I want you to do, and they did it, and they were happy. Um, this was as... This was the way things were supposed to be. They were living according to whatever God said. Um, and so now as Christians, as ones who have faith, that's what we do. We live according to God's word because his, we, we know now that our, our, our eyes and our heart and our minds have been awakened in faith, we can see and understand and hear that God's word is good. His will is good. Uh, what he commands is good. Therefore, we desire to do it, not out of a sense of I'm going to make God happy by doing it, but that we get to live like we're supposed to live. We finally are able to, through the Holy Spirit working through us, to live according to the, the, our, our creation. Okay? So the obedience of faith is, is this obedience that is brought upon, that, that um, is, comes with faith. Um, that faith actually, even if you want to look at it in, in terms of replaces obedience, faith becomes obedience. Um, what God commands of us, what God demands of us is perfect, holy perfection. Perfect, well, that's redundant. Perfect, holy obedience. There we go. <laughs> um, he, he demands us to completely be, be sin free, right? Because that's the only way we can, we, can, we can be with him and he wants us to be with him, right? So he, he, the, the law demands obedience. His will demands obedience. If we want to be with, with God forever, we, if we want salvation, obedience is the demand. The problem is we can't do it. We are unable to accomplish this on our own. So what God does is he sends his son, Jesus Christ, dies on the cross, forgives us our sins, makes us holy, makes us acceptable, and grants us his righteousness, his obedience, his perfection. Okay. So now when God looks at us, he sees Christ in us. He sees everything Christ has given us and has made our own. So now um, the obedience of faith is, in a way, you can look at it as the obedience of Jesus Christ in faith. That it is his obedience that um, is granted to us that fulfills that demand so that we are, are brought in. Okay, And so it's no longer us, but Christ in us. Okay, Paul talks like this. Um, so this obedience of faith is is not only you know the obedience that we are brought into in faith, that we are freed from the condemnation of obedience, um, free to do it now, not not worried about how you know how our behavior is going to or how our um, um, not behavior performance is going to affect our relationship with God because it doesn't. Okay, because Christ does all that work. So now we are free to simply live in this, in this good, perfect will. Okay, um, Or you can also see this as the obedience of faith that, that Jesus provides. He provides this obedience. He provides all that we have. Um, and so that's, uh, that's what we're talking about, the obedience of faith. So um, what, what the cool thing is about this is that just how freeing it is. So that as you go about your day to day, you're not thinking like, "Oh, how am I going to make God happy today?" Um, God is happy with you because of Jesus Christ. He's happy on account of Christ in you. Okay, so don't worry about that. Okay, Christ has got that. Holy Spirit's got that. No worries. So all you can, all you need to worry about is like, okay, how can I live in obedience today? How can I get to be a human being and and care and love for the other people around me? That's what you get to do. You get to worry about other people today and not just worry about them, but worry how you're going to love them, how you're going to show them that love, how you're going to pull from the, the, the endless well of love from Jesus, of Jesus Christ to, to fill you up and then to share with others. So um, the, the obedience of faith, when we hear obedience, we, we think being restricted or forced into something, but really the obedience of faith is a freeing and a releasing, enabling us to live the way we're always meant to be. So, see, easy stuff, no problem, right? All right, well, let us close in prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, 
that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you, for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Blessings to you on this Tuesday. Hope hope your week's going well so far, and I hope you have a great day. Um, and uh, you know, hope you're able to focus on loving and serving your neighbor. So have a wonderful day, and we'll be back at it tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.